today's message is called Love the House of the Lord and Those in It. I don't have the scriptures on screen today, so you have to actually look it up in the Bible. Oh, really? I think <laughs> God, God had a... Uh, ha, unfair, I know. What, what happened with technology? But, you know, <laughs> it, it's good to, to know the scriptures and know how to find the yes. scripture verses. I'm going to read from... Um, from a particular version, but you can read in your version. It, they're all the same, uh, but this uh, sometimes I like the wording of one version, which makes it very clear. So the title of today's message is Love the House of God and Love Those in It. Seems straightforward, doesn't it? <laughs> love the house of God and love those yeah. in it. Yes. So the first scripture that uh, I felt God give me was Psalms 122 verse 1. Psalms, Psalms is somewhere in the middle of the Bible. Middle. I think the actual middlemost scripture in Psalms is in Psalm 119. Psalm 119. But we're going to Psalm 122. So if you find the middle of the Bible, just turn right a little bit. Psalm 122 verse 1. Verse 1. 122. Verse 1. Verse 1. 122. Psalm. Psalm 122, verse 1. Yep. Verse one. I'm going to read from God's Word version. It is all God's Word. Um, you may have the King James. You may have the NIV. King James. But it should, it should all stand, uh, stay and say more or less the same thing. So, in the version I have, it says, I was glad when they said to me, let's go to the house of the Lord. How does it say in your version? What version do you have there? King, King, New King James. New King James. What does it say in New King James? Uh, one? Yeah, verse yeah. one. Uh, a song of ancient of David. Psalm 122? Yep. I, I, sorry, I, I was glad when... They said to me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Yeah, pretty much the same thing. In the King James, what does it say? I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Yeah, and I think we've got the NIV. What does it say there? I was glad when they said to me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Same thing. So God's word is clear. Are you excited today to be in the house of God? Amen. Amen. Now, this is your house, Narissa. This is where you live and where Daniel lives and, and the people who board here. But today, it's God's house. Because where two or three Amen. have come together in my name, I am there among them, it says in Matthew Amen. 18, verse 20. So God is here. So this has become God's house. We know that we ourselves are God's, the temple of God. Our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Amen. But there is a uh, a special anointing there is a special presence which god comes when this corporate worship when we gather together two or more in his name and that's what we're doing here doing tonight so it's not just sorry you know, it's not just your house it's god's house the house Amen. of the lord yes, and yes. we bless it we bless every time we come here every time you're here you get up early in the morning to read his word uh, you're blessing this house and any evil spirit every any presence that's not of God has to leave. Amen. We claim that in Jesus' name for this Amen. house. We claim blessings and yes. and God's presence to be here always upon this Amen. building because his children live here. Yes. Amen. Amen. So why do we set time apart to come to church? Why do we come here on on a cold Sunday night? Because we want to hear the word of God. Yeah, so we come to to meet with God, right? And to hear his word, to worship him, which we've done, and to meet with other believers. Yes. To encourage each other. Yeah, have a fellowship, yeah. In Hebrews 10.25, if you could find that in your, your version. I can't tell you what page number because they're all different Bibles. In the version I've got, I'll get you to read your version afterwards. It says, we should not... St- Stop gathering together with other believers, as some of you are doing. We must continue to encourage each other, even more as we see the day of the Lord coming. Hebrews 10, 
25, verse 25. So Hebrews 10, 25, what does it say in your version, Ate Samara? Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. Mm. As the manner of some is by but exhorting one another. And so much the more as ye see the day approaching. Yeah, so not forsaking. Yeah, not forsaking. Not giving up. Not stopping. Not forsaking. Exhorting is encouraging. Excuse me. And becomes a habit for some people. And once you stop going on, the, on one Sunday and next Sunday and the next Sunday, then it becomes harder to go back. But it, it, so let's make a habit, as Jesus' habit was, to come into the, the house of God. What, what does it say in your version? In your King Mine James? is um, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, mm, assembly, as eh? is a manner of some, but exhorting one another, and so much and more as you see the day approaching. Yeah, so the day of the Lord is the, uh, the final day. We are in the last hours. We um, don't know when Jesus is coming so the back day soon. Of, the, the approaching uh, the Lord's... Uh, the day of the Lord, yeah. It's so the, day, the second coming the of Jesus. The is, is approaching. Is, yeah. Right? The yeah. day of the Lord is approaching. It is approaching, yeah. Yeah. It's so, already here, isn't it? Well, yeah, today is a day that the Lord has made. But this is talking about Jesus' second coming. But end times. The end times, yeah. Which is another message. But... The, the, what the scripture here is saying is do not stop coming together do not make it a habit like some do of not assembling or not coming together in the new, new international version what does it say? Verse, what? Uh, verse 25 of Hebrews 10 Hebrews 10 mm-hmm not that he should offer himself often as the high priest. Uh, it's not chapter 10, is it? Hebrew 10, 10, 25. Hebrew. Yeah, Hebrew 25. Yeah, but uh, no, chapter Hebrew 10. No, Hebrew 10. Oh, Hebrew 10. Yeah, chapter 10 and then uh, verse, verse 25. 25. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves forsaking together yep. as is the manner of some, yep. but exhorting one another. And so much the more as you see the day approach you. I think that's the New King James. Yeah, it's the same, so that's good. But it still says the same thing. Not forsaking, not giving up the coming or the assembling of or gathering together. What we're doing here today. Yeah. Because we are a family. If we have been born again. Yes. And are now children of God, we are a family. Yes. Amen. For he's given us a right to become children of God. The last song that we said, Behold what manner of love that the Father has given unto us, that we should be called sons of God, children Amen. of God. Church is not just a social group or club. We often have great food here and we have a good time of fellowship afterwards, yeah. but it's more than just a social group or club. It is a family of believers. We all belong to this family and God wants to adapt, adopt sorry, more into his family here. 1 Peter 2.17 says, Honour everyone. Love the family of believers. Now have a respectful fear of God. So the family of believers is what we're called first and foremost to love. That's why we come here. It's good to meet old friends, but it's not a social club. We can go and meet them at the house, have a bit of karaoke, we can do all that. But this is the time to, to, to get together and encourage each other about God. Amen. So then... What stops people wanting to come to church? That's a big question. Yeah. There's a lot of reasons for that. Reasoning. Yeah. And unfortunately, it's, it is yeah. usually yeah. other people. Am I right? Unfortunately, yeah. sometimes family get on each other's nerves. I, I, you will, you'll have that member of our family that when we get together at Christmas or, or, or get together as a family, we go, oh no, Uncle Thomas or and I'm just make, plucking a name out of the pen, out of the air. But sometimes we don't realise that, and we talked about this in the Bible study Friday night, we don't realise that how we are makes other people feel. Yeah. 
Hebrews 12, if you just turn over a couple of pages, find verse 14 to 15. We're up to go up to Hebrews 12 now. 12. Chapter 12. Verse? Verse 14 and 15. 14. Uh, if you could read it in your version, Atilulu, please. All of these with all men and holiness, and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. 14. 14 and 15. 14 and 15. Looking diligently, lest any Most man end. fail of the grace of God, lest any wrath of bitterness is bringing up trouble, trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. Mm. Okay. Lest there, yeah, that's Just, it. Yeah, up to 15, okay. yep. Yeah. Uh, so chapter 12, um, have you got chapter 12 there? Or are you still on chapter, chapter 10? 12. Otherwise, yeah, we'll get... Um, a chapter to read. 12, verse 14 and 15. Uh, Hebrews chapter 12, uh, 14 and 15. Yes. For sure peace For with sure all peace. people yeah. and holiness without which no one will see the Lord. Looking carefully, lest anyone fall short of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up cause trouble. And by this many uh, become defiled. Yeah. So bitterness is a is a awful thing. When yes. we when we get hurt, the worst thing we can do is is hold on to that anger and let it become oh. bitterness. But yeah. I love it. pursue peace. In in this version that I've got, it says, try to live peacefully with everyone, and try to live holy lives. Because if you don't, you will not see the Lord. Amen. Make sure that everyone has kindness from God so that bitterness doesn't take root and grow up to cause trouble that corrupts or defiles men. Bitterness, is, 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 we can see when people are bitter. It actually changes their features. Yes. Have you noticed it? it, it their, their faces become grim <laughs> and they look angry all the time. And, yes. and, and some, unfortunately, some, usually some older people that have been hurt you see it and, you, and you, you, your heart cries out for them because you want them to let go of this. But it's also in younger people too. Can you think of someone that's hurt you that you'd never want to see again? Yeah, yeah but if you forgive. Yeah, so we, we need to forgive. Just because we forgive doesn't mean we have to be their best friends and buddies. Oh. Yeah, sure but if they're... Them, sometimes no. Christians hurt Christians. Mean uh, on purpose or not on purpose, but we are God's family, so we need to forgive and not let that root of bitterness grow. Yes, amen. we need to chop it up. We need to get rid of it, and that's yes. Th- no, notice how it links that to being holy. In the same two verses, it talks yeah. about being holy, and not letting bitterness grow. That anger can actually take away that peace or that yeah. peace with everyone else, but also with God. Does that make sense? Angry anymore. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. People very angry all the time, but no, no, never get angry anymore. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Lord. So our, our goal, praise God for that. You know, our goal is to make this place, God's house here, yes. welcoming and safe yes. for visitors to come Amen. to God and become part of His family. So to do that, we need to love and forgive. Um. We not see, may not see the people that have heard us come here. They may come here. They're welcome to come here. What if they come here? <laughs> are we gonna Are we going to reject them and say, "You don't belong here. Yes. You you hurt me." <laughs> or are we going to love them and forgive them? You forgive yeah. them. You yeah. accept accept them. And not not a yeah, and not a false love. Oh, God bless you. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> In, um, <laughs> that's that's hypocrite. Yeah. That's it. So, fail. Yeah. So if you can go to Romans twelve, verse nine and ten. Nine My nine evangelist nine. friend from Pakistan is watching. God bless you. So Romans twelve verses nine to ten. And I actually picked the NIV for this one because I like how it words it. But we, we'll read it in the different versions just to get an appreciation and full understanding. Verses 9 to 10. Do you want to start reading, uh, Mary Chris? Okay. Romans 12, verse 9 to 10. Correct, yep. Yeah. 
Let love be with us, hypo hypocrisy, yeah. abhor what is evil, cling to what is good. Be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love, in honor giving preference to one another. Amen. Amen. What about Amen. in the King James Version, what does it say? That's my heart. Let love be without dissimulation, dissimulation. abhor that which is evil. Cleave to that what, what is good. Be kindly affection one to another mm -hmm. with brotherly love and honor preferring one another. And honor preferring one another. Oh. So that word dissimulation is is a old word uh, that sometimes uh, like I, 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 I don't know the meaning without looking at other, other versions or looking it up oh. in the dictionary. Uh, in the New King James, what does it say? Nine, chapter nine. Yeah, uh, no, chapter eleven, uh, chapter twelve, verse nine. Yeah, verse nine. Let love be without hypocrisy. Hypocrisy with yeah. dissimulation. Abhor what is evil, cling to what is good. Yeah. So without hypocrisy, in in this version I've got here, which is NIV, it says love must be sincere. It's just another way, another way of putting it. So the dissimulation, or dissimulation, or hypocrisy, mustn't be in the way that we love each other. It must be sincere. So hate what is evil. So we love the person. We don't have to love what they do. And yes. they don't have to love what we do. That's but we right. cling to what is good. Look for the good in people. Look for yes. the good in people and pray that the good yes. far outweighs the changes. The God's presence, God's love changes that person. It says in this version, be devoted to one another in love. What's devotion? It's it's a very strong love, right? Yes. An honor or prefer one another above yourselves. When people stop coming to church because of other people, we know that truly it's a the devil behind it. It's not the person themselves. So when we're here, let us not let him trick us into doing his work. You know what I mean? What I'm trying to say is that let us not accept every thought that comes into our head and say it out loud, which has a chance of of causing division. Remember we talked about God finds the person who stands, who stirs up division against other brethren, abhorrent or abominable. It's oh. abomination. It is a very strong word. We don't want to be that person. We don't want to let that happen in our family and so we want to love each other and let's not do the devil's work for him he's got plenty of pe uh, people and, and, and demons to do that but let us do God's work let us work in love God is, God's language here is love Amen. so sometimes we've got to think before we speak right <laughs> and speak words of life not words that bring distraction or hurt we're human. Sometimes we'll say things that other people will take wrong and it's not intentional. So we should also not be easily offended. Ephesians four twenty nine to 32 is a wonderful, wonderful um, passage that God spoke to me early in my Christian life of knowing him. In this version, I'll read it out, and then I can, I'll get you to read it out in your versions. It says, don't say anything that would hurt another person. Excuse me, what? So Ephesians 4, 29 Ephesians. to 32. Ephesians 4, 29 to 32. Don't say anything, it says, that would hurt another person. Instead, speak only what is good, so that you can give help wherever it is needed. That way, what you say will help those who hear you. Don't give God's Holy Spirit any reason to be upset with you. He has put his seal on you for the day you will be set free from the world of sin. Get rid of your bitterness. There it is again. Hot tempers, anger, loud quarrelling, curse, quarrelling, cursing and hatred. Be kind to each other. Sympathetic, forgiving each other as God has forgiven you through Christ. Amen. God spoke... To me earlier, as I said in my Christian life, about that, about not using my words to to hurt others, to destroy. Uh, can we read that in the King James version? What it says? 
let no corrupt, corrupt communication him. processed out of your mouth, mm -hmm. but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. That's right, just up to there. Okay. Yeah, minister grace. Ooh, that's mm -hmm. powerful. Uh, what about the New King James Version? What does it say? Ephesians 4, 29, have you got it? Uh, hey, again, Daniel, good to see you. Not too well. We'll pray for you after. Uh, yes. uh, all right, sorry, that's all. It is, uh, we'll pray for you after. 29 to 32. Or just read chapter, uh, verse, four, verse 29. What, what chapter? 4, 9. 429. 429. Yeah. yeah. Ephesians 4, verse 29. 29. 25, 26. Yeah, 29. Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary in the edification that it may impart grace to the Hearers. Yeah, so no corrupt word or nothing that will hurt. It's it also talks about, yeah. Corrupt words meaning. Corrupt. Oh, that's why I like this version, or even the NIV sometimes just clarifies it a little better. Uh, do not say anything that would hurt. Um, have you got the NIV there? Is that the yeah. NIV? What What does your version say? Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification. That it may impart grace to the hearers. Yeah, I think that's in New King James Version as well. So Ephesians four twenty nine. I'll let me let me read it in the NIV. Just just so we. The reason why I I look things up in different versions is try to get an understanding. Because sometimes I mean I love the King James and New King James, but sometimes the wording, um, different. It just makes it harder to understand. And and God wants us to understand what His Word says. And that's why you also have concordances. Ah, NIV says, do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. So corrupt or unwholesome, so impure, sometimes our word. So Jesus said, what comes out of the heart of a man is what makes, makes him unclean. Yeah, unclean. So we speak from the heart. Yes. So it needs to be what is going to be beneficial or build up others or edify, edification, your, your version says. Does that make sense? Is that, Amen. Yeah. So I said, yeah, let's not also be easily offended. Because as I said, yeah. sometimes people say things and it's easy to get offended or upset or hurt yes, or irritated. Like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> also, let's not be proud, not selfish, yes, not amen. hold grudges. Yes. I'm not looking at anyone. Yes. Or looking at, I like that when you point one finger at someone else, there's three fing fingers pointing at you, right? They get you, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you have to look the mirror first for yourself. Correct. So, so love God and love <laughs> others. Uh, 1 Corinthians, the chapter on love. Um, if we could, do you want to read that from the 1 Corinthians 13, verses 4 to 7? Oh, wait, whilst you're finding it, I'll read this version. It says, this is God's word version. It says, love is patient, love is kind, love isn't jealous. It doesn't sing its own praises. So it's not proud. It isn't arrogant. It isn't rude. It doesn't think about itself. It isn't irritable. It doesn't keep track of wrongs. It isn't happy when injustice is done. But it is happy with the truth. Love never stops being patient. Never stops believing. Never stops hoping. Never gives up. So, And uh, verse 13 says, For these three, three things remain, faith, hope and love. But the greatest or the best of these is love. And 14 verse 1 says, Pursue love. <coughs> So let's, let's uh, read that in the King James, 13 verses 4 to 7. 
4 to 7. Yep. Mm. Okay, the first um, Corinthians 13. 13 uh, verse 4. Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. Mm. It's not uh, puffed up. Puffed up. Does not behave rudely. Does not seek its own is not provoke thinks no evil does not rejoice in iniquity <coughs> but rejoices in the truth mm -hmm. bears all things believes all things hopes all things endures mm. all things mm. and read verse 13 huh? uh, verse 13 as well please Thirteen? Yeah. Please. Oh, okay, thirteen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And now abide faith, hope, love, these three. But the greatest of these is love. The greatest of these is love. Yeah. These, these three things remain. I love this tells us what page what love is and what love isn't. So long suffering means patient, perseverant. Love is kind. Love yes. doesn't yeah. envy or is not envious. It isn't jealous. Yeah. It's not puffed up, mm. proud or arrogant. Does not, in this version, it says, sing its own praises. We've all met those people that you, you meet them and, and say, oh, look, look, this is what I've done. You know, this is my resume. You know, mm -hmm. I, I've, yeah, I used to be on the Hillsong team. I've recorded with <laughs> Hillsong. I've recorded with Kanzian in, in <laughs> Central America. And I use it. Mm, ah, it's me. Yeah. And that's not God. That's not love. No, no. Mm. Love just humbly says, "Look here, I can, I can play, I can sing." He's boasting and himself. Yeah, it, love doesn't boast. No. God's love isn't like that. It's not like that. So when we speak with love to others, let's try and capture this and internalize this. God's love. Amen. So when it comes out, we're just speaking words that build others up and say, "Wow, yeah, yeah. you look amazing today. Then you look really nice and warm, you know." You know, or, um, I like that scarf. You know, you know. I, I really see God, God doing His work in you since we started this church. Amen. You know that I really see changes happening, and Amen. and change can be slow, but I really sense God really doing something in your life. Hallelujah. And I'm not just saying that because of the sermon. These are these are words from the heart for you, brother. I can't, I can't really hear your, your uh, uh you can't really hear? In the room, your singing is awesome, but I can't hear what you're teaching, preaching. In the room, yeah. In the room. Yeah, I, no, you're here, can you hear? Yeah, I can hear now. Oh, well. Hear, yeah. <laughs> Stop complaining. I feel you should come up. Yeah. yeah. I have to, darling, I just want to hear the word of God. Praise yeah, God, man. yeah. Look, Hallelujah. just Daniel's he, he, the ha owner of the house here, or the, the person who rents here, um, he's not been well, but the word of God mm. is desired at, Hunger for the word of God yes. brought him out here yeah, to, words. to, yeah, to, to yeah. hear, to, to encourage us as well. Yeah. So praise God. Let's pray now and we'll pray that God's word and his love the would inhabit God. us okay. and, and come out of us as we, we build others up and speak words of life. Father, we thank you for, for this word, yes. this encouragement, Lord, to love. Yes. To love your house and love the people yes. in it, Lord God. Lord, let us, let us be a safe place, a place where people can come and feel, feel welcome. Lord, let us reach out, Lord God, in love and, and, uh, and, and bring people who need to feel your love, Lord. Yeah. Lord, we thank you for your word tonight. Thank you for speaking to us, encouraging us for your word of life. And uh, we love you and we, we, we give our lives once more to you, Lord God. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We're finished. We're finished. Yeah. We're going to oh, sing one more one song. One more verses. Oh, you want more? <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That's good. Oh, A hunger for the okay, word of God. Yeah. God so loved the world. Amen. That he, he doesn't necessarily want a long-winded message, but I think God, sometimes, you know, I've, I've brought a lot of, lot of verses. But today I didn't want to, to bring teaching. Mm -hmm. There was enough teaching in there, but I wanted to bring 
a message about love, Amen. about God's love. So Hallelujah. if we can grasp that. I want it more. <laughs> Let's get the uh, computer up and running again. There we go. We'll sing this one again. The power of your love. <laughs> online and you need a place that you can call home that you feel safe and feel loved we'd like to invite you contact me on facebook and i'll give you the address that you can come 6 30 p.m on sunday night in dune side yes. and uh if you're somewhere else in the world then we'll try and find a place for you as well mm. where you can come and fellowship we'll go and fellowship with other people that are going to encourage you and speak words of life into you god bless you and may you know the truth, because the truth will set you free. And Jesus Christ died for you and me. Amen. Amen. God bless you.